Well, good morning, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Council of the Americas in our joint session today of the 2020 Washington Conference on the Americas and our 2020 President Series. My name is Eric Farnsworth, and I'm very pleased to welcome you to this important, timely event with the President of the Dominican Republic, the Honorable Luis Abinader. Despite the pandemic, the Council has been able to continue our programming at the very highest levels while dramatically expanding our reach as the premier policy and business organization for the Americas. It's a testament both to the professionalism and creativity of our staff, as well as the generosity of our sponsors and members. Already during our disaggregated 2020 Washington Conference on the Americas, we've hosted US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, World Bank President David Malpass, President Sebastian Piñera of Chile, and White House Economic Advisor Larry Kudlow, among others. And for our 2020 President Series, we have hosted sessions with President Fernandez of Argentina, President Alvarado of Costa Rica, and President Duque of Colombia, along with President Piñera and also today's program. Later, we will be hosting the Presidents of Guatemala and also Panama and Uruguay. Once again, we have an A plus list of sponsors, including our presenting platinum sponsors, Chevron, General Motors, and Merck, known as MSD outside the United States and Canada. Gold sponsors for the 2020 Washington Conference include Chiquita Brands, Freeport Mac Moran, Integra Capital, MetLife, the Principal Financial Group, Repsol, and Sempra Energy. Our media partner is the Financial Times. Our 2020 President Series is supported by the AES Corporation, Cisco Systems Incorporated, Citi, and Corporacion America. And finally, today's event sponsors include Central Romana Corporation, the Kellogg Company, and Philip Morris International. We sincerely, sincerely thank each of them. And let me also give a special welcome to Foreign Minister Roberto Alvarez, a longtime friend, former ambassador in Washington, and world-renowned restaurateur. Our conversation today will be conducted by someone we all know very, very well, AES President and Council Board Chair Andres Gluski. It's a personal and professional privilege to have his leadership here at the Council. Ladies and gentlemen, Andres Gluski. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Eric. Uh, good morning, everyone. It is a pleasure as chairman of the Council of the Americas to welcome you back uh, to the 2020 Washington Conference on the Americas. As we continue this year's virtual conference, it is a real honor to have with us today the new president of the Dominican Republic, His Excellency Luis Abinader Corona. President Corona was sworn in not quite two months ago, on August 16th. However, he brings to the office decades of experience as a politician, but also, and very importantly for the audience today, even more experience as an entrepreneur and business leader. As CEO of the Grupo Abicor, he has been involved in a wide range of significant business projects and has been a leader in the all important tourism sector in the Dominican Republic. President Abinader received his undergraduate degree in economics from the Santo Domingo Institute of Technology, INTEC, and also did graduate studies in the United States at the Arthur D. Little Institute, Dartmouth, and Harvard. He's been recognized at home and in the United States for his civic and community spirit, qualities that without doubt led the Dominican people to elect him as their 54th president. President Abinader will give some brief remarks, after which he has agreed to take questions. If you have a question, please send a chat to Eric Farnsworth, and we will add you to the queue. Mr. President, the most uh, warm welcome here to the Council of the Americas. Thank you for giving us the honor of receiving you so early in your term, even though it's virtually. But the floor is yours, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Andres. I'm very happy to be uh, with you here. Uh, dear friends of the Council, I am honored to speak before you today. We live in difficult moments for humankind. The ongoing pandemic has tested our character and the resilience of our nation. The new Dominican government that they have the privilege 
believe, is working hard to ensure a rapid economic recovery while ensure the health and safety of our people. In facing this challenge, my government has deployed ambitious measures to jumpstart our economy and make sure we can guarantee welfare for all of our citizens. To help with economic recovery, my government will focus on the following. Ensure universal coverage of health care for all Dominicans by the end of this year, 2020. Facilitate access to credit for micro, small, and medium business. Fiscal incentive for our flag industry, such as tourism. We have even put in place a plan to cut taxes for tourism as well as to cover health insurance of tourists that come to our country. Incentive for agricultural producers to access financing under favorable conditions, promoting food security in the DR. In developing a national strategy for public-private partnership. In this sense, one of the most important aspects that my government is concentrating on is promoting Dominican exports and foreign direct investment. The Dominican government supports the initiative Back to the America, put forth by the U.S. government, and we salute the proposal as per headed by Senator Julio Amenendez in this direction. One issue we will strive to call is that of ensuring the rule of law in our country. We know that for years this has been one area where the Dominican Republic has lacked. Our country has consistently scored very low international indicators of rule of law at that time. But the new government will ensure that the situation is remedied. The Dominican Republic is the largest economy in the Caribbean, with a market of more than 10 million people, and both a high human development index. As part of the GASTA DR, we have shown that we are committed to free trade and economic integration in our people. My government will continue to strengthen our dedication to free trade, and it is a paramount to our goal to create 600,000 jobs by 2020. We understand that the best social policy is to make sure people have jobs that allow them to fulfill their needs and potential. In this regard, I must take a moment to reiterate that we see the United States as our main ally and friend, not only because it is our first economic partner, but also because we share similar democratic values and respect for human rights. The United States represents 56% of our export, nearly 6 billion US dollars. We plan to create further incentives to make sure trade with the US can grow even stronger. The Dominican Republic is uniquely positioned to be a regional hub for export as well as logistics. We have other trade treaties besides GAFTA DR with partners across the region, including a big part of the Caribbean Trade Agreement with the EU, EPA. EPA. Our country also votes over the dozen investment treaties that greatly facilitate the business environment. Additionally, we have a stable political climate and a highly productive labor force. My government is also working with the private sector to promote a more effective performance of our business. Thank you very much. And we are very happy to be here and respond to any questions that you have. Thank uh, you. Sir. Mr. President, thank you very much for those uh, comments and really giving us a view of the economic plan that you have. I think the first question would be the Dominican Republic has had quite fast growth, you know, over 5% over the last, uh, you know, several years. Uh, and now you've had this uh, pandemic. So maybe uh, talk a little bit about how you see, you know, what would be the drivers like, you know, foreign investment you mentioned. There's also remittances from Dominicans abroad and a recovery of the tourism sector. Maybe you'd like to give us a little color of your views of how to attack uh, or approach these issues. Yes, Andres, uh, as you know, with, with the, this crisis, uh, we are in a very special circumstance. Anyhow, all 
all parts of the Dominican economy has been recovered, except tourism, because it doesn't depend on us. It depends on the cost of the from where the content that the, the tourists come. Even there, in that area, I have spoke with all uh, the main owners, the main owners of the hotel, uh, the hotels in the Dominican Republic, with all the tourism and hotel sector. And we have made a compromise of a start opening hotels. Just in October, we will open uh, 40% of the hotels, especially in the Utacana region, and all over the, the country. But also, uh, in November, we hope that we will have 60% of the hotels open. And at this moment, we have 50% of the reservations that we have last year, which is not bad. So that is in order that the economy, that the, the, the tourism will recover. And if the tourists... <laughs> Very good. I um, maybe I can ask a question. Let's recover. We're having some problems with the connection. Uh, we can hear you. If the service recover, uh, I am sure that the, the economy will be in a normal way by, uh, let's say, March, April next year. Uh, that I think will also come with the vaccine. Uh, that uh, several parts of the world they are uh, they are preparing. So we are very we are very optimistic. We are very positive that the Dominican Republic will recover fully by uh, March, April of next year. Also, in terms of the remittance, uh, we have, it does increase the remittance uh, to our country, which is uh, has also helped us for the balance of payment. So we have a very, at this moment, a very stable macroeconomic uh, situation uh, in the We have taken a lot of measures in our government to have a good quality of spending of, uh, of our uh, budget. We have eliminated a lot of uh, uh, institutions that did nothing for the quality of life in the Dominican Republic and also uh, transferring these uh, funds to areas like health, uh, like financing for micro, uh, protecting our women and uh, enhancing them to be entrepreneurs, and areas where, real, where really we can have a development. Yes, Mr. President, you've taken some uh, bold proposals on your budget to make sure that you have a sustainable long-term budget. Uh, and so I really congratulate you on that. Um, another area that's very important for the Dominican Republic is energy. You know, we uh, at AES have been a happy investor in the Dominican Republic uh, yeah. and are continuing to invest. You know, we're building a second gas tank, gas pipelines, you know, to the east. Uh, we'd be willing to build one to the north as well. And this is a very important uh, commercial exchange with the U.S because the natural gas would be coming uh, from the U.S. So I guess the question I, I have is a little bit, I've heard that you're interested in making some reforms to the energy sector, and I would like to hear about them. Yes, uh, we are very happy also with having you as a very good investor in our company. A, a, I, a, yes, has been a, a very good uh, company. Uh, the company, Dominican Republic, and also a, I, and develop together. And we hope that you can invest more in our country. For example, with that project that we have in Manzanillo, uh, in the North Coast, that we will have a master plan of development to find energy. Uh, also, where, where we have an area for natural gas and, and energy generation uh, that we will put for an open licitation uh, for that you can bet, and, uh, as well as other companies the next month. Uh, so uh, we're very happy with this. In terms of the, what is the electric sector, as you know, we have a, a problem with the, the companies, uh, the commercial distributors of electricity. Uh, they, they have been for decades, has been uh, creating deficits, uh, not just in the companies, but also uh, to our budget. 
uh, half of the deficit of the public of the non-financial public sector comes from the these distributors of energy. So we are thinking, and in our uh, government proposal was that the management of this, at least the management of this. Uh, electricity distributor be in the uh, hands of the public, the private sector, uh, and to be managing a more effective and also a, a productive uh, way. That would be a, a very good, a, a very big change uh, because it will eliminate the, the, the politics from from that commercial and distribution that has that's created, as you know, deficit or uh, during the last 20 years, and that deficit has that gone to the, the, the depths of the, of the government. So that we are working on that proposal in order that the private sector can, can also uh, uh, participate uh, on that transformation. Excellent, very interesting. Um, I'd like to talk, maybe switch a little bit towards the relations with the United States. You know, you, in your inauguration, uh, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, who had, was one of our speakers on the series uh, here, uh, came to your inauguration. And you mentioned in your opening that uh, you see the United States as, you know, perhaps your closest friend and, or as a major friend in the, uh, in the area. So maybe you could talk a little bit about, uh, you know, one of the issues that the Dominican Republic has had really has been Haiti in terms that if Haiti uh, is an economy that's not done well and they have, uh, you know, sent a lot of, um, very, you know, poor people over to the Dominican Republic and caused uh, uh, problems there. So how do you see the sort of situation with, with Haiti uh, and other countries in the region? Yes, uh, yes, Andres, uh, as, as you said, the United States will have its uh, Special relationship, as I think, as never before, we will cooperate in the in the fight uh, against uh, narcotics in the region, uh, uh, against international crime. Uh, we will work together to uh, fight international crime and also uh, to promote democracy in the whole region. And I don't have to say why well, we need this special relation. And at the same time, with this administration, we share the same democratic values. In, in terms of Haiti, it is uh, it is a big problem for us and also for the region. And I see that uh, the Dominican Republic, as our uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, said yesterday, uh, uh, there is not a, 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 just a Dominican solution uh, for Haiti. It cannot be a Dominican solution for Haiti. It has to be a regional for Haiti. We can be the leader in terms of organizing a group that can help Haiti. But it has to be very clear that the Dominican Republic uh, cannot uh, be the solution uh, for the Republic of Haiti. We have to be good friends, we have to cooperate in the in development, but we are two very different countries and uh, we, I, we have to uh, call, we have to uh, uh, make a, a very a strong message to the international community that uh, everybody, and we can be leader on that, uh, but everybody has to organize in terms of helping aid to help themselves. And, and for that, they have to organize politically. Uh, in a better way, they have to modify their ways, make a stronger vote. In terms of other countries of the region, as I said, we are going to uh, we are going to develop democracy uh, and, and, and be a promoter of our the values of democracy uh, in the whole region, also of free trade, uh, cooperation uh, in every way. Uh, starting from the cooperation, uh, uh, fighting crime, and the way as also as developing investment and the competitive industry that, uh, that our countries have and that we have also uh, uh, in, in the region. I think if we can uh, have a group and we can organize uh, better than ever and, and in the best way, 
uh, our economic development better. I think that makes a makes a lot of sense, and and the Inter American Development Bank and other people can play a key role there. And I think that uh, Dominican companies can help. You know, if a more prosperous Haiti helped develop it, you know, certainly we could send energy to Haiti, um, you know, construction, other things coming from the Dominican Republic. I have a time that we have uh, that we can, uh, we can uh, uh, export and, uh, and get energy to Haiti uh, from, uh, from several, uh, from the north and from the south of the island. Yes, and, it, and that, you know, Haiti needs so much. And again, the better Haiti does, I think the better for the Dominican Republic. And I think the way you have, have um, expressed the problem is absolutely right. It needs a hemispheric approach. And uh, it it's, it's, uh, can't just be up to the Dominican Republic by itself. These resources from the country, big countries um, in the hemisphere. I have here a question from uh, one of our uh, participants, and it's really, you know, you've given this vision of a, you know, modernizing the, uh, the um, Dominican Republic, you know, uh, incorporating, uh, you know, women, more social programs, more help. Uh, and here's really, how does the digital agenda fit into this? Because a lot of the things that you're attempting to do, you know, whether it's health, whether it's um, a more efficient and transparent government, obviously, uh, digital could help help make that a reality. That's a very good question, Andre. Uh, today we have uh, an announcement to make the country that uh, we will uh, we are working to make a, a, a proposal for companies, uh, a, a telephone and and internet companies that, that, that we have here in Dominican Republic and also for for all the others in the region and in the world, uh, to make a licitation for the 5G. Uh, there has been no work on the 5G of the previous book. Now we are gonna we are gonna move uh, be very far behind on the digital uh, agenda uh, to be on on the first line of transformation on the digital transformation. Uh, with the 5G. As of today, at the at 3 30 p.m., I am doing a press conference uh, telling the country and, and the participants of that sector how we are going to move from here uh, to January in order to make a licitation uh, for the 5G uh, uh, that, as you know, will help us uh, very much in every way and especially uh, to make our industry uh, much more competitive. That will also help us to transform uh, the government to be a, a, a digital government. We have, uh, have transformed one of the uh, vice minister of the presidency to be my vice minister for um, digital transformation, and we are working uh, that in the also in the government. At the same time, this problem of the pandemic, uh, especially in the uh, in the, uh, in the education sector, in the pre, uh, in the high school and the school, uh, it has helped us uh, on the on trying to eliminate that uh, digital bridge that we have in the poor and, and middle class and and weak Dominica. Because at this moment, we will start. And we are working on that direction. On the 2nd of November, we will start the a, a, a school year. And we will, it will start by TV, it will start by internet, and, and for that we are inviting a one million and a half a tablets, notebooks, and we have given a laptops to all the a, teachers of the country. And, at the, and also at this moment, uh, we have 400 uh, between all groups and, and also laptops on site uh, to give it to them and 1.5 million uh, on the process of uh, acquiring it. That will be a very big uh, jump on the uh, digital transformation of our country and especially that uh, eight years old, we have notebooks and uh, 15 years old, 
on the high school uh, we have done. That would be an, an enormous sacrifice for our government. But I can, uh, we cannot permit that certain areas of the country can start the virtual uh, year and the poor uh, neighborhood uh, and poor sector of our country uh, cannot start. So the government is responsible to go and help all those that cannot uh, start a virtual uh, school year. And we are doing that, and that will help a lot on, on the digital transformation of our country. That, that's really wonderful to hear how uh, technology can also help sort of educational inclusion and really leapfrog technology. So that, that is really fantastic. I have I two think questions. Great, and just, just to finish with that, okay. one of the few good things of this pandemic is that because of the uh, virtual obligation that we have, uh, like, like in this meeting, what, had, what was going to take was five years to do it, we have to do it in five months. And I think that's one of the lessons uh, of this crisis. And that's one of the few positive things that we get from it. Yeah, we, we've all had to change, including the council, <laughs> in terms of how we operate. But as you say, a lot of good things have come out. We actually reached more people and I've had more meetings than, than ever because it used to be meeting in New York or meeting in Washington or meeting in Miami. And now, this is a perfect lead into the next one. How, you know, how does the Dominican Republic take advantage of the shift, shifting supply chains? You know, there's much more after the COVID, people are thinking of sourcing uh, closer to home. And so I think that will be good for the uh, Dominican Republic as U.S. companies seek to uh, source, you know, closer to the United States instead of having the supply chains so concentrated in China. So I think you've given some, some ideas how that's been going. And related, do you see what is the role of the free trade zones in this, in this sort of nearshoring, as they call it? Yeah, that's what I said. The nearshoring, we are, we are very much uh, optimistic on the nearshoring. We are working uh, very close to the U.S. government and, and, and other uh, private sector uh, groups. I think the Dominican Republic is a, in, a, in a very special uh, position to benefit from that. And even before uh, my inauguration, uh, our Minister of Foreign Affairs, the Minister of Commerce, and our or our institutions to promote investment and trade, they are working together uh, to uh, establish a, a more facilitated, let's say, let's say like that way for the near shoring. Our free zones at this moment are has a lot of uh, proposals to be installed in the in the DR. I think that's one of the issues that becoming stronger from this crisis. And we are working with them to facilitate the necessary infrastructure so they can establish in the country and at the same time create jobs. It's our uh, main goal of our goal. So in some sense, uh, Andres, uh, we are uh, working. There are very important companies looking to establish in the in the DR, and we hope in the next uh, in the next year that uh, hundreds of companies uh, will establish in the Dominican Republic. And we are open uh, for that, and we, we we are this government uh, will be very fast uh, on looking on the time of the permits, that's the permits necessary to establish. Uh, we are, uh, we have a program called uh, Zero Bureaucracy Efficient Government that we we, we we are starting to implement in the country in order that uh, you can establish a company in 24 hours, you can get a, 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 a permit uh, very fast in any, uh, not with a standing, what industry you are investing in order to facilitate the investment and facilitate jobs. Uh, the 600,000 uh, jobs that we are expecting to create in the next four years, we are a, a, an important part of that job. Uh, we are a uh, that we will improve the assurance. 
excellent. Um, now that you know, you mentioned uh, 5G and uh, you know the digital revolution. One of the points in conflict has been between the U.S. and China, you know, regarding uh, let's say influence in that area. And so, generally, how are you? You know, this is um, an area where uh, you know it's it's. Uh, a country like yours has to has to you know balance the two things, balance many things. So a little bit, how are you thinking about that in that particular area? You know, when 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 I say today that we're going to make the licitation for that, will be the uh, companies that promote that uh, service. Uh, uh, we have uh, here uh, four uh, companies that that uh, do the service and. Uh, and promote the uh, internet service. So uh, this technology uh, will be promoted by them. After they propose, then we will see and analyze uh, from the security point of view. But it, it is not the government that will establish the 5G. It will be the private international company that will propose a, a, on, on that direction. I think that this international company uh, are very much uh, working on this uh, on any security issues with the U.S. and and, and uh, regarding that fight. Interesting. Um, you mentioned uh, DR Kaftan, and so how can uh, the Dominican Republic take more advantage of DR Kaftan? I mean, you, I think you have a, a more digital and inclusive uh, government, and you know. You also have the free trade zones and you have the near shoring. Uh, so then the question is that I'm getting here really is, how can you take greater advantage of DR CAFTA? And also, are you thinking of other uh, uh, free trade agreements to, you know, to incorporate into this, um, you know, export oriented Dominican Republic? Yeah, we will, any new trade agreement, we, we will analyze uh, by case. Uh, but in, in, in the DR uh, CAFTA trade agreement, uh, I think that uh, from my point from my point of view, uh, we have not developed uh, uh, the export from Dominican Republic as we should. I think it has been beneficial for both countries. Uh, the, the commerce has increased. Uh, but in our country, import does increase much more than the export. And uh, I think we have to level that. And, and to level that, the government has to work with uh, the private sector uh, to be more competitive. Uh, and there we are working very closely with the uh, competitive uh, council uh, that uh, you have all the main uh, business uh, sectors in, in that concept uh, in order that we go case by case uh, to be more competitive and at the same time the government I think uh, should help more on the logistics and on the promotion uh, of the uh, of export. Uh, also at, uh, in this month uh, at the end of this month we will launch uh, the, uh, what we call a, a Dominican Republic brand in order to create our brand uh, with all uh, the good things that this country has and uh, that also can help us promote uh, our uh, export. The, so we are working on a on a investment cabinet that we also we recently created uh, in order uh, that this uh, investment cabinet will uh, work on the competitive side and the promoting part uh, to try to uh, develop more export to the United States and, and to other countries there where we have the, the CAFTA trade agreement. We, we don't say uh, we're open to other free trade agreements, but we were analyzing that case by case. At this time, we have free trade, trade, free trade agreement as you know, in the U.S., with Europe, with other countries, and that is a very special uh, opportunity for countries to establish to manufacture in the Dominican Republic and to export without any uh, taxes 
to the main markets of the I got another question here. Uh, what are the plans for the green uh, economy? And in, in especially sort of uh, climate change mitigation in the Dominican Republic? You know that that the, the, this climate uh, situation uh, the, in the world cannot be dealt by one country and not by a very small country like China. Uh, this this is a, a world problem. This is a problem that in all countries we have to work. Uh, we maintain and uh, work uh, and we sign the Paris uh, uh, Agreement, and uh, we are working and respecting uh, the, that uh, Paris uh, Agreement. At the same time, uh, we are uh, uh, trying to work with the green economy. Uh, we are we are going to develop a special financing line for recycling uh, in, the, in the whole country. Uh, and we have been very far behind uh, on, on this uh, sector. And also, one of the plans that this government has uh, advanced decades, decades that we have of, of not working on the, on the green economy, uh, uh, trying to uh, to get to the point that uh, we have to care about the world. We have to be we have to be we have to be more decisive. One of the examples that I wanted to lead is that uh, uh, my car is a Tesla, it's an electric car, and also with the VID of our working uh, with a ten-year electric mobility pro a plan that in uh, 2030. Uh, at least 25% of the cars in the Dominican Republic will be electric. Uh, and on the recycling, as I said, we are doing a line of financing for recycling in every sector of industry of the DR. Well, Mr. President, this has been fascinating. Uh, as, as and one good thing, Andre, is that, as you know very well, we are increasing natural gas. Uh, uh, for the production of electricity in our country. And I think that uh, the programs that we have in the north will be increasing more. And as you know, that natural gas, even if it's not renewable or energy, is a very clean energy to produce electricity. Well, Mr. Be we've run out of time, but I, I, have, I have gotten several, uh, one question that I need to address with you, and that's, um, Really, uh, regarding the um, health sector and the vaccine distribution, if you can give us very sh quickly, you know, a little bit your views of how you're going to distribute the vaccine and any other comments you want on the health sector. At this moment, we already have the logistics to distribute the vaccine in the country. Uh, we also, with the help of a group of uh, recent man, uh, we are uh, we, we are making a deposit that in the next week we will announce uh, in order to buy uh, 10, million, uh, 10 million vaccines uh, from one source. Uh, and this is, I can say, the AstraZeneca Oxford uh, vaccine that they are developing. But at the same time, we are working on the uh, uh, OMS, OPS, uh, in order for the first, the first vaccine that uh, is available to this people. But in that uh, uh, special uh, vaccine uh, project we did uh, uh, in Oxford, uh, we a group of businessmen uh, already uh, from their own uh, source at the Carlos Slim Foundation in Mexico. Uh, we uh, had uh, an agreement for uh, 10 million, as I said, uh, vaccines, uh, we will apply to 5 million Dominicans because that vaccine has have to, have to be applied in uh, two vaccines in order to that you have a 100% effect. So we are prepared on the logistics and we are prepared also the first vac uh, the vaccine, secure vaccine that we uh, have uh, will be applied in the Dominican. Excellent. So unfortunately, Mr. President, this has been fascinating. It's hard not to feel enthusiastic about uh, your government and the Dominican Republic. Uh, as a uh, 
someone who has big investment plans uh, underway in the Dominican Republic. I invite others to join. I think it's a, a really, um, again, congratulate you for all the initiatives that you have underway. Uh, on behalf of the Council of Americas, thank you so much for your time. Uh, count on us as to be a uh, to work with your administration to get the messages out. Uh, you know when we can all meet in person, we'd like to welcome you to uh, to our uh, New York or Miami or uh, Washington office. So I want to also thank everybody who dialed in. I also want to thank everybody for your questions. Uh, very happy to see you. We're going to continue with these this phenomenal series, this conference on the Americas which has been virtual. Uh, so uh, hope to see you again and uh, stay well and stay safe. So thank you very much. And Your Excellency, thank you so much. Thank you, Andre. Thank you, Eric. Thank you to all the people of Council of the Americas. And I just want to tell all of you that this is the time to invest in the Dominican Republic. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the public portion of our program. Thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you again very soon here at the Council of America. They just connect now.